Good morning. This is Pastor Paul here with another Sunday morning worship. So today we are celebrating the eighth Sunday after Pentecost. Uh, you will notice I am wearing my alb, which means it is a communion Sunday. So if you would like to participate in the Eucharistic meal, uh, I invite you to go ahead and grab those elements. If you already don't have them with you, uh, you can feel free to pause the video and grab those elements for that part of the service or you can pause then and uh, do it then too but uh, if you're like me you're probably gonna forget um, so I invite you to do that now a couple of announcements uh, just to a reminder that as always uh, please share prayer concerns so that we can lift one another up in prayer uh, if you have any specific prayer for prayer requests for me uh, to pray for uh, I would be happy to hear from you so please feel free to share those with me as well. Um, and uh, um, you will also hopefully be receiving fairly soon uh, a postcard with updates, um, if you're on our mailing list, uh, updates on uh, services, what we're planning on doing. Uh, so as, as council continues to, to discern um, what the next steps are. Uh, we are, we'll let folks know uh, when we're going to gather back together in person, um, but we'll still have uh, online worship available as well. So uh, definitely seen a, a positive response from this, and I don't want people who have been able to participate in worship uh, suddenly not be able to. So we will still offer online, um, but council is going to uh, work together to decide uh, when that date is that we do gather again in person. So uh, keep your your eyes open and your your mailboxes sorted for that. Um, finally, uh, a huge thank you to the East Central Synod of Wisconsin. Uh, they have they received a grant of uh, money for updating technology. Uh, and, and assisting in the, the time of, of COVID-19. And so they uh, offered five loan or five grants, uh, $500 each uh, for, um, for the Synod, for congregations that needed to update their technology. And out of over 50 applicants, Wilderness was one of them, one of the five that was picked uh, to receive one of these grants. Uh, so we give thanks to the East Central Synod of Wisconsin um, and for all those who helped to make that decision uh, and also for those who helped uh, make those funds a possibility. So we are grateful and uh, we already have plans on uh, updating sound system, uh, incorporating some uh, additional features of technology in the worship space uh, as well as uh, fleshing out possibilities um, with the donation we got from Zion and doing outdoor activities as well. Uh, now that we have a sound system that is semi-portable, um, if you got big muscles, you can move it anywhere um, as long as there's electricity. So uh, again, we give thanks for uh, those donations uh, that will, will greatly help us to uh, continue to provide in this time. So with that, I invite you to join me uh, in the brief order for confession and forgiveness. So uh, with that, we begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so we take time to contemplate sin in our lives.
Most merciful God, we confess that we are in bondage to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for us, and for his sake forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sing now our entrance hymn for the beauty of the earth. grace of our brother Jesus, the love of Patamaus, and the unity found in the Great Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray together our prayer of the day, which you will find on your screen. O oh God, your ears are open always to, to the prayers of your servants. Open our hearts and minds to you, that we may live in harmony with your will and receive the gifts of your Spirit. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. First lesson is from the first chapter, or the third chapter of First Kings. At Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I should give you. And Solomon said, 
You have shown great and steadfast love to your servant, my father David, because he walked before you in faithfulness, in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart toward you. And you have kept for him this great and steadfast love, and have given him a son to sit on his throne today. And now, O Lord my God, you have made your servant king in place of my father David. Although I am only a little child, I do not know how to go out or come in. And your servant is in the midst of the people whom you have chosen, a great people, so numerous they cannot be numbered or counted. Give your servant, therefore, an understanding mind to govern your people, able to discern between good and evil. For who can govern this, your great people? It pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this. God said to him, Because you have asked this and have not asked for yourself long life or riches, or for the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern what is right, I now do according to your word. Indeed, I give you a wise and discerning mind. No one like you has been before you, and no one like you shall arise after. Here ends our reading. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 13th chapter. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. Then in his joy he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered Jesus, Yes. And he said to them, Therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out his treasure, what is new and what is old. The Gospel of our Lord. Well, there you have it. The Gospel according to Matthew, 13th chapter continuing in with a lot of uh, of grain and farming imagery uh, we're we're seeing Jesus tell a lot of parables and explain about faith and God and the kingdom of heaven using these various techniques so this week um, we hear we start off with a, a mustard seed uh, which we've heard in other other tellings as well uh, how it starts off as this tiny little speck and grows into this huge tree that is that is just so enormous that birds come and make nests in its branches, uh, which, um, as many of you may have n known, uh, mustard doesn't really do that, at least not the mustard that we have. What it does do, though, is that it's something very, very uh, persistent. Uh, if, if you plant mustard in your garden and you're not careful, soon you've got mustard everywhere. So we start in uh, with this image from Matthew of this mustard seed, this seemingly insignificant thing, this ordinary little tiny seed that 
Meh, whatever. Easy to overlook. And then we see how it grows and how it continues to, to surprise us. And the kingdom of heaven, Jesus says, is like that. This is something completely unexpected. Something that uh, seems so insignificant at one moment and so amazing. So that just indescribably significant in our lives. That is what the kingdom of heaven is like. It's also using the image of uh, the pearl and the treasure out in the field. That's, that's a field. <laughs> um, the kingdom of heaven is something that is, is extremely valuable, that is cherished, that it's something we're willing to give all that we have to sell everything that we own in order to obtain it. Now, uh, granted, that's something that, you know, this is something that we are given, and uh, we aren't asked to throw away everything else and just hold on to this. Um, but it, it shows just how powerful the kingdom of heaven is, that when you have this, you don't need anything else. The kingdom is all that you need. It is the end all and be all to us. Right? The kingdom is, is that powerful, that beautiful, that priceless that we would give up everything in order to experience it. And the, I, I want to go back a little bit. That uh, we see that, you know, mustard seed isn't really anything special. Uh, yeast or leavening, eh, whatever. It comes... I mean, except for in these times where it's hard to find packets of yeast. Um, but we see it everywhere out in nature, even. Um, it's it's prevalent everywhere. Um, same thing with mustard seed. You know, you can go to any grocery store and, and buy some mustard seed. You can uh, go to a farming store and get some seeds if you want to plant mustard, just be forewarned. Um, put it in a planter or have it well separated from everything else. Because it will spread. Um, and then also, you know, fishing with nets and farming in fields and uh, buying and selling merchandise. These are all ordinary things, right? Nothing too crazy about them. Making bread. I mean, that was something that people did every day. You know, a woman is making bread. That is not going to create headlines in Jesus' time. This is just something that was always done. And we see in Matthew's gospel that Jesus is comparing these mundane, ordinary, everyday things. These, meh, you know, wouldn't give it a second thought type things to the kingdom of heaven. Not because it's so ordinary and just meh, whatever, but because it's so surprising in that in those mundane moments, in those everyday items, we get glimpses of the kingdom of heaven, right? We see that, that um, this treasure that's found in the field, uh, obviously was a surprise. And, and what does the, the farmer do? He goes out and sells all that he has in order to buy this field to receive this treasure. Same thing with that pearl. We have a merchant that is, you know, buying and selling goods all the time comes across this beautiful pearl, this piece of perfection, and simply has to have it and is willing to give everything else in order to obtain this. We see how the kingdom of heaven spreads like the, the yeast, the leavening agent in bread. That this time, one little bit is enough to continue to grow and rise three measurements of wheat into leavened bread. And you see how this tiny little bit of 
The kingdom of heaven is able to grow and blossom into a tree that shelters birds from from the elements. You see how the kingdom of heaven is constantly surprising us, popping up where we wouldn't expect it to, and entering into our lives in even the most ordinary of times. And then, so I want to share a story, right? Um, many of you probably have participated in friendship bread, right? Or Amish bread, uh, where you throw in, I think it's a, a cup of, uh, cup of flour, a cup of sugar, and is it a cup of milk into a bag? And, uh, you started off with this starter and then every couple of days you, you add three cups of stuff, uh, and eventually you, you separate that and then use that to make bread. So you're continuing to to use that yeast. That yeast continues to grow uh, and is, is able to provide uh, loaf after loaf after loaf of bread for your family, for your friends. And the friendship bread, it's meant to be shared. Uh, so you throw in all sorts of goodies, chop some nuts and, uh, and some fruit in it and uh, make it a special dessert bread for others to be shared. And that's kind of what's happening here. The kingdom of heaven, right? It's not something that we're supposed to hold on to for ourselves. This is something that is to be shared. That is to be experienced between others. This is something that is more than just any one person. Because think about it. As powerful as yeast is, if it's not put in an environment where it can can work and be revealed and and grow and be made powerful and and affect everything around it and if you if you keep in that little little packet uh it's not gonna do anything it's just gonna sit there and so it's when it's put to use that we see its power same thing with the mustard seed when you buy a a little container of mustard seeds and it sits up there in your cupboard and doesn't do anything. But if you plant it, then you see that it can grow into something truly magnificent, truly persistent, and and um, and incredibly enduring. So we see that in the right conditions, these things can can blossom and bloom, and do wonderful things. And that so that brings me to one particular yeast from Holden Village. Now, if you've heard me preaching quite a bit, you've probably heard me talk about Holden before and the bread there that's supposed to be so amazing and I got there and it was homemade bread. But there is something that is quite powerful about their bread, is that the yeast used there, at least if the stories that we heard were true, the yeast is, is over a hundred years old. Um, obviously not the same little bits, but it has continued. It has continued to grow and be split and, and, uh, shared and, uh, and, and that, uh, continues throughout the ages. So we have people from different, different ages, different backgrounds, uh, different times, even people that would never have met in person because one may have passed before the other was even born, are united by this yeast, this continuation. They're united in that experience of tasting fresh homemade bread from this yeast that has lived longer than most humans. And that, I think, is what the kingdom of heaven is like for me. The kingdom of heaven is not something to be experienced for one person. Obviously, we should experience it. But the kingdom of heaven is so much greater than us. Our faith, what we see in the world, how we see God at work in the world, doesn't start with us and it doesn't stop with us. We are just one little batch of wheat in the continuation of of this yeast throughout the ages. We are one little sprig of mustard seed 
that comes off of this huge tree that has grown. We don't start anything or end anything. We continue things. We pass things on to others. And that is the power of faith in our lives. That is the presence of the kingdom of heaven. It is the realization that we are tiny little pinpricks in this huge, beautiful tapestry that is God's kingdom. We seem insignificant like a mustard seed. But when the Holy Spirit moves within us, when we are able to experience the kingdom of God, truly amazing things can happen for us. Amen. And now I invite you to sing with me our hymn of the day for the fruit of all creation. Let us confess our faith together using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate. He was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident of your care and help by the Holy Spirit, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. Merciful God, your reign is revealed to us in common things. A mustard shrub, a woman baking bread, a fishing net. Help your church witness to the surprising yet common ways you encounter us in daily life. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. When your word is opened, it gives light and understanding. Increase our understanding and awe of your creation. Guide the work of scientists and researchers, treasuring the earth. May we live as grateful and healing caretakers of our home. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As the birds of the air nest in branches of trees, gather the nations of the world into the welcoming shade of your merciful reign. Direct leaders of nations to build trust with each other and walk in the way of peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your spirit helps us in our weakness and intercedes for the saints according to your will. Help us when we do not know how to pray. Give comfort to the dying, refuge to the weary, justice to those who are oppressed, and healing to the sick. We pray especially for those we name aloud and in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You show steadfast love and direct us to ask of you what we need. Help this congregation ask boldly for what is most needed. Refresh, refresh us with new dreams of being your people in this place and time. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In you our lives are never lost. Strengthen us by the inspiring witness of your people in all times and places. Embolden our witness now and one day. Gather us with all your saints in light. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In the certain hope that nothing can separate us from your love, we offer these prayers to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please share that peace with one another. And then I invite you to pray with me. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, maker of all things. Through your goodness, you have blessed us with these gifts. With them, we offer ourselves to your service and dedicate our lives to the care and redemption of all that you have made. For the sake of him who gave himself for us, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. People of God, in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. People of God, at this time I invite you to celebrate the Eucharistic meal, if you so choose, remembering that the body of Christ is given for you, and the blood of Christ is shed for you. When you've finished communing, I invite you to join me in prayer. Pour out upon us the spirit of your love, O Lord, and unite the wills of those whom you have fed with one heavenly food. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. People of God, may Patamaus bless you and keep you. May Patamaus make shine on you and be gracious to you. May Patamaus look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit that makes us one. Amen and amen. I invite you to go in peace, serve the Lord, and sing our ascending hymn, Sent Forth by God's Blessing. Blessings to you. <laughs>